Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin tones, it could be the most difficult one to find. Today's episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin will be a little bit different because we are covering a product that is not actually even released yet. I am so fortunate to have received a factory sample of the Inzinkable SPF 50 from Skincare by Dr. V, and in today's video, we're going to be putting this to the test to see if it is black girl approved. Also, I want to change the tag at the end of my videos. I always say I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video, but I want to be inclusive. So I've been thinking about it for a while, but I don't quite know what to change it to. Leave your comments down below and let me know what are your suggestions to change the tag to so we can be inclusive. I love all of our beautiful butterflies and unicorns and everyone else in the entire universe. So beautiful people, do your thing. If you missed the previous video, it'll be linked up above in the cards. Make sure that you are subscribed and click that notification bell so you get updated every single time we put an SPF in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As always, as I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind and at the end I'll give it an overall rating out of 10. Now I'm sure Skincare by Dr. V needs little to no introduction because that is probably the reason why you clicked on this video. But this little baby beauty brand started, I think last year, was created by Dr. Benita Rathan, who is a doctor and a cosmetic formulator who specializes in care and treatment for skin of color. She's also the owner of the Hyperpigmentation Clinic, which specializes in treatments for hyperpigmentation in skin of color. And of course, she has a channel here on YouTube where she shares her knowledge, information, advice, products, so on and so forth in treating sensitive skin, different skin conditions, specifically geared towards uh, darker skin tones. So we love that. I've always known Dr. V to be very analytical and the advice that she gives very precise. It's not abstract thinking, it's something that was actually studied and these are the results. She's very result focused. So these products and this brand definitely follow suit as well. So for overall brand, I'm gonna be giving this a point. Let's get into the application. Packaging. Now, like I said before, this product is not actually released yet. So packaging wise, we're not quite sure what it's going to look like. Now, she did post photos of what the prospect bottle would look like. Um, and from what I remember, I wish I took a screenshot of it. But from what I remember, it kind of looked like a, a plastic 
opaque bottle with like soft matte finishing around it. You know, you know what the soft matte finishes of plastic is, but it kind of reminded me of the Shishido packaging. I'm not quite sure what the nozzle specifically looks like, but from the product itself, it's not really runny. So I don't really um, hypothesize having an issue with it spilling or running all over the place. So for packaging, as long as it has a nozzle, honestly, I will be just fine. Uh, for now, we're gonna be giving this a point as well, but this of course is subject to change. So I'll do an update later on once I get the actual physical product. Price and quantity. Now I think it's super important to understand the pricing and the quantity that you're getting of your products because you want to be paying for the ingredients and for the quality versus just paying for the packaging. I spoke with Dr. V and she said that this product will retail for around £24.99. So in Canadian, because I am from Canada, it would cost around $42. Kind of more of a higher end La Roche-Posay Shishido type of range, um, which I'm fine with as well. As for how much value you're going to be getting from this product, I always like to look at what's called the daily cost average. If you watch any number of my videos, I talk about this all the time. I do a simple mathematical calculation to figure out how much you're going to be getting, how much you're going to be using, and how long this will last you. Now, I will link this up above if this is the first time you're seeing it. But so I've already done the math for you guys. This will last you 42 days and it will cost you a dollar every time you use it based on the price in Canadian. When it comes to daily cost average, it's important to look at multiple SPFs. That's a really the only way that you're gonna know if you're getting the best bang for your buck. So when I do review 10 of these SPFs, I will do a recap video where I line them all up to see which one is the better value. So make sure that you are subscribed and click that bell so you get notified when we post that recap video. For now, we're going to be giving this a point as well. Okay, ingredients. Y'all, I was like, ingredients is very important to me when it comes to what I'm putting on my face and what's being absorbed into my skin. So it's something that I do take a lot of notice towards. This product is supposed to be 50 SPF, which means it's going to be providing 98% protection against UVB rays. UVB stands for burning. That means you're going to be able to be outside for two hours without burning from the rays of the sun. As this is a European sunscreen, it does follow Europe and Asia's Persistent Pigment Darkening Index. <sighs> Say that three times. <laughs> this rates UVA protection, A for the aging, on a 1 to 16 PDD scale, whereas 10 PDD protects against 90% of UVA rays. During the testing that was conducted on Inzincable, they did find that this has a PDD rating of 16.9%. Three, which provides a PA plus 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 so four pluses um, which is music to my ears this is honestly like amazing as for the ingredient list this product is not yet released so I don't have my hands on the complete ingredient list but I did ask for the active ingredients I thought that was really important to share so um, it does contain a trademarked stem cell vitamin complex called Melashield which is U a UV stable tyrosinase inhibitor that is stable in sunlight so continued use is designed to fade your hyperpigmentation on your face which is amazing like girl if you've seen any one of my videos you know that i have had pigmentation from my severe cystic acne from like 2017 so is it's Anything that will help me get rid of that pigmentation, I am all here for it. Obviously, this is an overtime um, effect. It's not going to happen in four days. So we'll see how that goes when I actually get the, the product itself. Um, the main ingredient in here, of course, is nano zinc oxide, which has anti-inflammatory properties, really great for people with sensitive skin. Mineral sunscreens in general are very good for sensitive skin because they are not as irritating as chemical sunscreens are. And because of the size of the particles, because they're nano particles, they're not supposed to be absorbed into your bloodstream. I know that a lot of people are concerned about the effects that sunscreen can have on our body long term, since we actually don't know what's gonna happen in the future. It's gonna take a long time, a lot of accumulation to see what is gonna happen with these products. Of course, not trying to scare you. The best sunscreen to choose is the one that you are going to wear, regardless of what it's gonna do. It's much better to protect your skin against the sun because we know the damage that the sun is gonna do to your skin versus you know just staying clear of sunscreen just because you may have something down the line. It's, it's, I don't think it's debatable to wear sunscreen, but that's my personal opinion. Other things to note about this product, it is supposed to protect against blue rays. So the blue rays that come from your screens, devices, so on and so forth. It's also supposed to be, like I said, safe for sensitive skin, safe for pregnancy, safe on kids, 
melasma and of course acne prone skin and it is also designed to be non-comedogenic so it's designed specifically not to clog your pores. That was a long ramble but um, we're going to be giving this a point as well. Application. Let's get into it. As many of you guys know, I generally am not the biggest fan of mineral sunscreens just because there's a lot of things. I don't like the cast, I don't like the smell, I don't like a lot of things about mineral sunscreens, but I know it's the best one that you can wear. So the fact that this one is a mineral sunscreen and supposed to avoid all of those issues that people have with it, I'm really excited for this one. So after trying it out, I do feel like the texture is slightly grainy, which I've come to expect with mineral sunscreens, that it's, it's a mineral. There's, you can't really get away from that. Um, and it does feel a little bit thick right out of the tube. However, once it does touch the skin and you start rubbing it in, that graininess goes away. It absorbs quite nicely as well. It actually turns into a, a rich, creamy texture and it doesn't feel thick. Initially putting it on, I was a little scared, okay? I'm gonna be honest, it does take a while to rub in, but it does rub in quite well. It does soak right into the skin. It has like a, a dry touch finish. I wouldn't say it's matte, not mattifying at all. It doesn't leave your skin feeling dry or anything like that. It, it's not like a, a natural sheen, like you know how the black girl sunscreen gives like a sheen to the skin? Not quite that. I feel like it reminds me of the Neutrogena Dry Touch Ultra Sheer. SPF, which is also, I believe, a mineral SPF, it kind of finishes like that. It's not matte, but I don't feel like I need to add a moisturizer underneath. Another thing to note about the texture, because it is a mineral SPF, you are definitely going to need an oil cleanser to take it off. I just found that that was the most effective way of taking it off your skin, and you want to make sure that you get this off fully and it doesn't clog your pores. It is a bit thicker than most chemical sunscreens, obviously, but as for a mineral sunscreen, it is one of the best that I've tried so far. For application, I'm gonna give this a 0.7. The finish. So I've said before that this product goes on a bit thicker, but once it does dry down, there is no greasiness to your face, there's no shininess, there's no oiliness, and it doesn't feel dry, which I really do enjoy. It almost feels like it's like a powdery finish. Like if you touch your hands afterwards, it feels like there's powder on your hands, kind of. I actually don't really mind the way that it finishes, especially if you're someone who's gonna be wearing makeup on top. Um, if you have like oily or a combination skin, it is really important that you find an SPF that doesn't overly dry out your skin or overly make it shiny. I do feel like my makeup applies very well on top of this. I'm obviously wearing it today as well. And I didn't feel the need to wear a primer. I usually don't wear a primer if I'm just using a everyday makeup look. If I'm doing like full glamour stuff, I will put on a primer. I actually did try it with a primer as well and there was no pilling too. So love that too. Um, but yeah, under makeup, really great. I didn't powder at all today either. Um, I'm a bit shiny just because of the lights here, but if I dim the lights, it doesn't look like that. Let me see here. Okay, it is like 8 p.m., so there's not really much natural lighting outside, but hopefully this will show what it looks like without the lights like reflecting on my cheeks. But yeah, no oiliness. I applied this, I reapplied this twice on my face. No powder. I did not powder my skin. Um, and I think it looks really good. There's no overly oily, oiliness on my face. Granted, I have not been outside, so maybe if I was outside, I'd be a little bit more oily, but for right now, I'm good. Now, personally, I do like my sunscreens to give more of a natural sheen to my skin. I do like my skin to look a little bit more glowy. Um, so dry touch isn't my favorite personally, but I do like how it finished. Um, for finish, I'm gonna be giving this a 0.7. Reapplication. So I talked about this just a little bit, but for reapplying this on your face, I didn't find any pilling. I didn't find that this product balled up or had a weird um, mixture of the dry product on your face and the wet product that you're reapplying. No issues there. And it blended out very evenly. It didn't cling to my makeup when I put it on it as well. Um, but yeah, I really do enjoy how it reapplied. Because of how long it takes to rub into your skin, patting this on top of makeup is not gonna give you like the full uh, white cast free finish. It is gonna leave your skin looking a little bit tinted gray. So for reapplication, definitely if you're not wearing makeup, reapply this. This is good, good to go. On top of makeup, you may wanna look for something else though. As for reapplication, we're gonna be giving this a 0.8 white cast. Once again, this is like one of the most important factors when it comes to SPF. As darker skin types, this is this is just the noticeable finish that is on your face. And very, very happy to say that although this is a mineral SPF, there is zero white cast. 
Dr. V did it, a mineral sunscreen with no cast. Very, very happy that it's gonna be getting a point for me. Fragrance. Dr. V coined the term NAIF safe, and if you follow her on Instagram or any of her socials, she talks about this all the time. NAIF safe stands for no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, and no essential oils. And this product, of course, follows suit. There is no scent to this product, so anyone with sensitivities, sensitivities to those type of ingredients, you're not gonna find this here. So that will be a point for the sensitive skin people over here. Lastly, let's talk about flashback. Just in case you're going to a function and you need to be using flash photography, you'll be safe with this product because in Zincable doesn't have any flashback whatsoever, whatsoever. And I am really shocked about that because I know that minerals, at least I expect to get a little bit of flashback, but no, there was none. And now I actually took that photo right after I reapplied my SPF, just so I could see like, would it give a flashback when it's wet and maybe after some time it will dissolve? But no, I, I saw nothing on my face whatsoever. This is gonna be getting a point for me as well. So overall, this is of course a first impressions. I don't quite yet have the full completed product, but so far it is going to be getting a 9.2 out of 10 for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know, are you interested in the Inzincable? Is it something that you're gonna be trying? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.